Queens back on top, baby! Zuma, 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 zoom. What's going on, y'all? It's Gum Gum TCG here, back again with another video. And today I have for you my queen deck list that I've been piloting for most of the OPO4 format. At the beginning, I started with something a little bit different, but this is what I've been playing for almost the whole time, honestly. And, uh,. I'm going to be updating it again here in about a week or so to accommodate for the new ban list and what kind of threats we're going to be seeing at the top of the meta then. But for now, I wanted to show you at least what I've been having great success with until this point. I've had great success at locals, topping a lot of those, as well as uh, a buddy battle that I went to the other day. And uh, I'm going to be playing in an online regional here in a week or two. And I'm going to be changing up the list to accommodate for that to play against more yellow, maybe some more blue, green things like that so I just wanted to show you what I've been working with until that point so maybe if you're wanting to build Queen this could be a good starting point for you but without further ado let's go ahead and jump right into this deck list all right y'all so as you can see we got the top-down view working uh, I apologize again for no face cam like I said I'm trying to work on that right now I'm a little tight on money and don't have enough to buy a whole new camera so please bear with me when we do these overhead shots and I don't have a face cam uh, I know you all are going to miss my beautiful face however before we jump into this I want to say if you are not subscribed definitely make sure to subscribe because we're going to be doing a free giveaway once we hit 1,000 subscribers if we can hit that goal by the end of the year I will be giving away one box of OPO5 to a lucky US subscriber. I do have to say the giveaway is US only, but please feel free to subscribe even if you're not in the US. Help me reach that goal. I'd greatly appreciate it. And uh, I also wanted to shout out Dueling Guard. If you haven't heard of Dueling Guard, they are an amazing company that makes TCG accessories that are anime inspired and they are such high quality and the designs are so beautiful, you really will not be disappointed. They make binders, deck boxes, and play mats for anything you could need, any card game. And uh, if you haven't checked them out before, I'll leave a link to their site as well as a code GUMGUMTCG you can use for a discount at checkout. What? You haven't heard of Dueling Guard? Dueling Guard is the best TCG accessory company on the market. They have high quality deck boxes, binders, and play mats made for people who enjoy playing and collecting trading card games in style. They have tons of designs based off of fan favorite anime such as One Piece, Leech, Full Metal Alchemist, and many more. They hit the ground running earlier this year making high quality TCG accessories with beautiful designs that have sold out many times. So if you haven't picked up any of their products, make sure to do so before they sell out again. I have a few deck boxes and playmats from them already and can attest to how they don't cut any corners when it comes to quality, performance, and design. I highly recommend their products and use them every time I play cards. Be sure to check the description below for a link to their site and use code GUMGUMTCG for a discount at checkout. All right, let's go ahead and get into this deck list. I'm gonna go ahead and move the actual deck to the side here, and we're gonna talk about the Queen Leader. So if you don't know what the Queen Leader does, it says it's a 5,000 power leader. It has four life, it is blue and yellow, and it says dawn times one when attacking. If you have a total of four or less cards in your life area and hand, that means total. This leader's a little confusing, so I'm gonna to try to explain it as best as I can. So if your hand and life area is four cards or less total, draw a card. But if you have a character with a cost of eight or more on like in play, you can add a card from the top of your deck to the top of your life instead of drawing. So Let's say I have two cards in my life area, I have two cards in my hand, I put a Dawn under my leader and I swing. I can draw a card. But let's say that same scenario, two cards in life, two cards in hand, however, let's say I have a nine cost Yamato on the field. That's a character with a cost of eight or higher. I put a Dawn under my leader, I swing, I can gain a life instead of drawing a card. Uh, that's what this leader is really all about, is playing a long, grindy game, putting big bodies on the field, and healing yourself every other turn 
to try and stay alive against some of these really aggressive decks. Uh, that's going to be your key is putting those big bodies on the field and trying to defend yourself as much as you can so that in the long game, when you don't have a lot of cards in hand, you can heal every turn. And sometimes you can heal more than once per turn with some of the cards we're playing. So I hope that broke down the leader really well and you can understand what this does. You probably already know what this does if you play queen. However, not everybody knows what this leader does. And like I said, it is rather confusing. So I just wanted to go over it before we get into the deck list. I'm not gonna go over too many of the cards uh, specifically like their effects and everything unless they are newer cards and uh, I'm going to be talking about how those cards really interact with this leader and can help you for uh, better games. I'm also going to be giving you suggestions on other cards you could run if you don't have some of the cards because some of them uh, specifically one that I'm playing right now the Katakuri the eight cost has recently gone all the way up in price so if you don't have those I wouldn't recommend buying them because a lot of lists start to move away from those into set five. But uh, no deck can be complete without a set of Dawn. So I have my I Love You Dawn here, all 10 of them. And uh, let's go ahead and just get into some of the cards. So we're going to start with the lowest cost first. And the first card we're going to be playing is the 2000 counter Kaya. We're playing four copies of this. Uh, on play, draw two, trash two from your hand. Just great hand cycling if you need it. But it's rare that I put it on the field. Most of the time, I'm going to be using it for a 2k counter. And like I said, with this leader, you have to play your cards right. You have to be very defensive. This deck is pretty strategic at times and um, not the easiest to pilot super successfully. You know, you really want to be doing everything to the most accurate that you can. So uh, discarding cards for counter early to get your hand size down low. It's very nice to have 2k counters in your hand to be able to do that. So next, we're going to be playing three copies of the Trafalgar Law one cost blocker out of the uh, uh, Seven Warlords structure deck, I believe. Yep. And uh, it's just a one cost 1000 blocker. It does not have a counter and that's kind of a downside about this card. However, I really do liking running a couple of these because there's turns where say you have too many cards in hand and life, but you have a big nine cost body on the field or in your hand that you wanna play. You can play that nine cost body and you can also drop a blocker on the field. I know not too many lists run this card. However, I do think that it is very nice to run and I might even bump it up to four. I believe I was playing four before and it was just a little too bricky where it doesn't have a counter however uh to help offset some of those cards in our deck that do not have counters i think i am going to start trying out some gum gum reins as a extra countermeasure and it helps you get more cards out of your hand when you need to uh next we're going to talk about two cards at once and that's going to be four copies of the charlotte brulee as well as four copies of the boa hancock both blockers out of structure decks however uh they're three cost thousand power thousand counter which counter is nice you can at least discard these if they're bricking up your hand but we really play them because they are trigger blockers if you trigger these out of life you can trigger them to play them onto the field immediately so big for this deck honestly huge uh helps you out a lot when you're playing this deck you know you'll take a life late game and say you don't have the counters you hit one of these out of life it could be it could save you for the end of the game and uh that's why we max out on these i've seen some lists not maxing out of these and i don't like that i like to max out on my trigger blockers and uh you'll see another one that we play here in just a minute but i like to play four copies of all of them because i think that this these cards and this mechanic is insane to play a blocker right out of life these don't even have a cost to do that you just play them right from life so absolutely absurd in my opinion uh, next we got another blocker if you've noticed so far we play quite a few blockers in this deck like i said it's very defensive and uh, the next one's going to be the three cost do flamingo blocker now this came out of opio one it's been almost it's been a blue staple ever since honestly this card's phenomenal you play it and you get to stack the top five cards of your deck or put up to the bottom and in queen playing one of these near a turn that you're going to heal or on the turn you're going to heal is massive i've honestly been thinking about dropping a couple uh putting a couple copies of perona into this list just for the same reason you know you could go perona play yamato from hand and then yamato heals you the card that you just stacked that's what i like to do with dofi i just like this more than perona because he is a blocker but um I, I think I am going to test out some copies of Perona, but being able to stack the cards and know what you're going to draw or 
stack on your life is absolutely huge, especially when you're playing so many trigger blockers, we're playing some events that have great triggers, we're playing uh, Beige, that's actually going to be the next card, so that's a good segue into that. We're playing four copies of Beige, this card's incredible, and uh, I'm sure you all know what this does by now, but if you don't, it's vanilla, but it is a nice 2k counter that has a trigger that stops a leader or character of one of your opponent's leaders or characters from attacking this turn. So being able to trigger this on your opponent's turn, willingly take the life and stop one of their big bodies from attacking that turn could be life or death in this deck. And uh, being able to stack that with Doflamingo is just absolutely crazy. And that's why we max out on Doflamingo and Beige. Um, I also have done plays where I've played Beige a couple turns in advance because I don't have a knight, I don't have a beater on the field, so I just put him on the field and my opponent's not really worried about it because he's so small. I don't swing with him until the last turn. I swing and then I'll drop eight drop Katakuri and I'll stack this into my life face up so they know um, that they're going to have to deal with that here when they try to attack again. Next, we're going to be playing another 2K. However, I'm only playing three copies of this because I was getting clunky on some of the 2Ks, and this one is my least favorite. I think the Kaya and the Beige are more important. Kaya being able to cycle your hand for two, and then uh, Beige being able to stop things off of trigger. Uh, Sasaki, just being able to shuffle your hand back and basically mulling again again, is it's pretty strong. Uh, don't get me wrong, but I don't do it ever. I mean, I don't think I've ever done this in a game. Uh, he's really just in here for another blue 2k if you have a better 2k you've been thinking of definitely let me know i'd love to hear your suggestions and i'd also love to hear what you think about this list you can always post that in the comments below and i'll definitely reply or you can also jump into my discord if you're not in there we're trying to get 100 members in there and once we hit that i'll be doing a free box tournament so make sure you're in there before we hit 100 members we're getting close but yeah this is pretty much just another 2k you can play him on you can play him on the field just as a beater but uh, it's not often that you really want to do that. I'd like to save my Dawn for blockers and stuff like that. And speaking of blockers and beaters at the same time, we have Sanji. Sanji is one of the best yellow cards to come out of OPO4, in my opinion. Uh, just another great trigger blocker. 1,000 counter, 5,000 power, which is really great. Uh, you do have to trash a card from your hand to play him. However, that's no big deal in this deck. Getting down in hand size is really helpful, especially doing it on your opponent's turn so that that card you draw makes it so that your hand was the same size as when you played uh, Sanji. So... Yeah, he's really strong. I often use him as a beater if I have another small blocker on the field, and then I can just protect him with that blocker or 2Ks in my hand, and having another body on the field to beat with for 5K is always solid in my opinion. Um, and then he also has that utility of being a blocker. Absolutely crazy good card, and uh, definitely max out on this. This card's insane. Then next, the, this is where I was really wanting to change the list. Uh, we're going to be playing, I'm playing, <laughs> I keep saying we're going to be playing. We are playing, I am playing three copies of 3000 Worlds and three copies of Red Rock. Now, I like these cards both a lot. A lot more than what I initially did. You know, they're great cards, great solid removal. They both have decent triggers. You know, uh, this bottom decks a five or less and then on trigger bottom decks a three or less and this bottom decks anything and on trigger bottom decks a four or less so having access to these in your hand holding them for late game against decks like yellow when they drop multiple big moms holding your red rocks is very important and for that reason i'm going to be shifting up red rock into four copies i definitely think it's necessary moving into this next format and i think i'm going to be doing the same for 3000 worlds they're both absolutely insane cards that help get remove remove any threat you really need to remove blockers remove giant bodies remove problem cards all that good stuff and also hitting them out of trigger is really impactful too so I want to maximize that. I'm going to be upping these to four copies here in about a week or so, and uh, I'll be sure to do an updated deck profile after a couple weeks. But uh, yeah, these have definitely been MVPs in certain matchups against Yellow, against Doflamingo, Doflamingo especially. Having access to Red Rock and 3000 Worlds against that matchup when they're only playing big blockers multiple turns in a row, or not necessarily always big blockers, but blockers like Uta and Luffy. Being able to remove both of those, especially like doing it in one turn, if you have both of these in hand, you just get rid of both of those cards. Oh my God, it's so good. So definitely gonna be changing this up and maxing out on those. 
And then I am playing three copies of Soji King. This is my middle end, you know, he's seven Dawn. So uh, I do usually go first in this deck, but I'm thinking about switching that up and starting to go second because uh, having that extra Dawn on your leader to be able to attack with, as well as being able to play on your curve is really helpful. I guess it doesn't really matter to me which I go first or second. I guess the second Dawn curve can be nicer, but typically I like to go first. If my opponent's deck I know likes to go second, I will choose to go second then. But um, yeah, I play a lot of odd cards, odd number cost cards. So being able to go first or second with that is is pretty nice, honestly. Uh, but Soja King, just a great card. You know, he has the Kaya effect. You draw two and trash two, but he also returns a uh, six or less to the opponent's hand, which is so good in this deck. You have to have good tempo when you're playing queen and being able to go Soja King one turn and then Mihawk the next to get rid of two nice bodies and also stick two nice bodies on the field while getting access to that queen effect closer, closer to that queen effect through the drawing and trashing with Soja King and then having the nine cost on field. Uh, I, I really enjoy Soja King in this deck. He also does have that thousand counter, which I think is really nice. That 6k stat line was also good into Whitebeard. However, we don't have to deal with Newgate anymore. So uh, I'm thinking about cutting this down to two copies. I do like it a lot. However, there's times where I'm playing multiple blockers from hand or I'll play a blocker and use a 3000 worlds or maybe a Red Rock or something like that. So I'm thinking about cutting him down to two copies, but uh, I guess we'll see. I do really like this card a lot though. And then next, we're going to be getting into the big top end. And to start things off, we are running four copies of the Akos Katakuri. This card is phenomenal. However, it is so bricky at times. I mean, if I have one of my other high costs in hand, it's often that I'm playing them over this. So uh, I am going to be cutting this down to three copies. And then, like I said, once OPO5 hits, I'm probably going to be testing around with no copies at all. I do think he's a great card. However, in OPO5, the deck list just changes a little bit. We get access to John Giant, which is just a big vanilla that uh, has a better stat line than Katakuri. And uh, we also have access to Tindrop Kaido, which um, I'm probably going to be playing one or two copies of that because drawing a bunch of cards is always crazy. So uh, definitely going to be experimenting with uh, the ratios on this. However, I have liked four copies. It just gets clunky because none of our top end plays any counter. They don't have any counter. So having, I, I literally have 11 cards in my deck that don't have counter, not counting the other cards in my deck that don't have counter which is kind of bad. That's why I've been talking about wanting to play Gum Gum Rain, and uh, I'm going to be trying that out by cutting a copy of this and maybe a copy of Soja King and maybe a couple other things. But um, I do like him. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do. You can always like swing with your Sanji, play Katakuri, stack your Sanji back. You can put a Beige on field a turn early and then swing with it the next turn, Put play Katakuri, stack it back into your life. You can stack your other small trigger blockers. This is great for uh, removal against certain decks. Uh, I mean, he, he's a great card, don't get me wrong, but I think I might, I, I honestly would like four copies of Mihawk better. Um, I don't know, he deals with an eight or less, Mihawk only does a seven or less. I'm gonna have to play around with it, but four copies has been working for me. Uh, you can always discard them off of your drawing and trashing effects and some of your triggers, so... Um, yeah, and then also getting that Katakuri loop, you know, when you have one on field and then the next turn you play another one and you stack this one after swinging with it, and then you take this next turn on your opponent's attack, then you swing, play this one that you have in hand now, stack this one, it, it can get really annoying against your opponent and a lot of the times they can't out it. So uh, really nice to have access to that too and consistent access, you know, with the four copies, but I don't know, gonna play around with those ratios a little bit. Like I said, this list has been working great for me, but there are some things that I think I am going to change moving into this OPO 4.5 format, whatever you want to call it. And then next, I got four copies of Yamato. You have to max out on this. If you're not playing four copies of Yamato and Queen, I think you're playing the deck list wrong or you're building it wrong because this is honestly the best card in the deck. This card can allow you to heal twice in a turn and get rid of a body on the field. So I don't know why you wouldn't play four copies of this. On play, it KOs an opponent's character with a cost equal to the total life on the field so whatever your opponent's life cards and your life cards add up to you get to pop that number so a lot of the times when you play yamato you want to be at one life and queen so whatever your opponent has plus that one life you play yamato maybe they have two life you pop a three cost then yamato lets you gain a life and then hopefully you should have if you played your cards right you should have low enough cards in hand to also stick one under queen and attack and heal again so you went from one life to three popped a body and gained a nine thousand beater uh 
very insane, very strong card, and yeah, definitely play it at four. I think Katakuri and Mihawk, like I said, I am playing Mihawk. I'll just go ahead and put this on the field. So, uh, Katakuri and Mihawk, I think, are interchangeable, and you can play whatever ratios of those you want. Yamato, you have to max out four of. That's just my opinion. Um, let me know what you think, but I do think that it is a guaranteed four of when you're building a queen list. One of the first things that you put into the deck, four copies of it. And then, like I said, I'm playing three copies of Mihawk. I think I'm going to bump this up to four and then cut out that Katakuri like I was talking about because Mihawk can come up a little bit more. He's a bigger stat line, and I don't know. Maybe I'll keep them both at three. I'm going to have to test out a little bit more, but uh, like I said, d take all of this with a grain of salt because this list has been working great for me. Uh, it's not often that I brick too much I can't play, and I always have some sort of play to do with this leader and this deck, um, but there are a couple cards that I'm going to be trying out and a couple cards I'm going to be throwing in for this new format and having to deal with yellow decks where, honestly, yellow is a hard matchup for queen just because they are able to put big bodies on the field and then near the end of the game they just start to heal and rip constantly they heal their own life and then they rip yours just every turn for a few turns in a row it can be absolutely devastating against queen when you spent your whole last turn trying to heal and they just rip it away so uh, like i said if you play right if you hold your red rocks again for those 10 drop moms and that katakuri you can you usually can get away with a victory against them but uh, this deck doesn't have too hard of a matchup against other things. I do want to say I think the green-purple Dofi matchup can be a little difficult if you don't play right. I've had to learn to hold my big bodies on the field without swinging with them once it's like 10 dawn turns uh, just until I get my opponent weak enough so they can't um, they can't use the 10 drop Doflamingo on me. Let's say I have a Mihawk and a Yamato and let's say I have another Mihawk on field. And then uh, this turn, I went uh, swing with Yamato, swing with Mihawk, and I just played this Mihawk the turn before. Swing with Mihawk, put one under Queen, swing and heal, and they go next turn, Doflamingo. I'm going to lock these two in this one. And then you're like, okay, and I get to restand this on my next turn. Well, I can't heal with my leader effect. I have to have like at least a Yamato to heal. So uh, I guess I'll swing for nine. Then they block with a Luffy or they block with an Uta. And then they go, my turn? Okay, I'm going to attack that Mihawk for 10k. You have to counter it. And then they go play another 10-drop Dofi. Lock, lock, lock. And once they get your leader locked and your big bodies locked, it, it can be really hard for you to come back from that. So playing correctly against Doflamingo, I think, is something I had to learn the hard way a few times. But if you do hold back a little bit with your swings and you just play very conservatively and defensively, they really have no choice other than to hold their Doflamingo. It's not going to get them anywhere if they play it and just rest, let's say, your leader when you have three 9,000 cost, 9,000 power bodies on the field. Um, I think the Blue Croc matchup can also be a little tough just because they can out everything just as well as you can, if not better. And then they also have access to Sentamaru. So you do have to play your cards right against most decks. Uh, there's not really a matchup that this is just a a quick easy sweep and you're also gonna have to watch out for those queen mirrors because people are gonna start gravitating towards this deck where we're into a yellow format where we're going to be having to play removal as well as cards that can heal this is like the only leader that's really good at that so those are my takes on this and this has been my deck list i hope you've enjoyed it and you can maybe see where uh, my head's at with this list and what I'm talking about moving into this next format and then when OPO5 hits what we're going to be doing with it but I am going to be playing this deck for a while so I will be sure to keep you all updated on this list from here on out so uh, if you enjoy the video definitely make, make sure to give it a like and please subscribe like I said we're on the road to a thousand subscribers don't forget to check out Dueling Guard in the description below with code GUMGUMTCG make sure you join the discord and I will see you all on the next one peace